Hill with Regal Metalworks. Hey, today's uh, vlog, we're doing a wheel repair. Uh, I've shown you how to uh, repair a cracked rim, a cast aluminum rim, how I go about it. Um, hopefully it can help somebody out there if you run into an issue where somebody needs it repaired or you're thinking about repairing one. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a little time consuming. You just have to take your time. It takes me roughly about two hours, hour and a half, two hours to repair a rim right. And most of that is just your prep work and then uh, cleaning up the inside. Because most of them crack on the inside and uh, you need to make sure you can get the tire to seat in there or, or it will leak, still leak air. So, alrighty guys, go ahead and enjoy that. And let me know if you like it. Give me a thumbs up or let me know what you think. Alrighty guys. We have this wheel here that customer dropped off that is cracked. Let's see right here. It's cracked. The crack looks like it ends there, but if you look on the inside, the crack actually comes the whole ways down to here. So the first thing you got to do is find the end of the crack and drill it out. The reason you want to do that is so the crack will have a less, less likely chance of continuing to crack further on. So what we would do now, after sanding it all down, we got our hole over here, is we now need to cut a V-channel, basically cut this all out, all ways down to that hole. And when we cut that out, what we'll do is we'll weld it back up on this side. And then once we got a good weld bead running the whole ways through here, we'll come to the inside and we'll close it up. We'll fill the, the rest of the gap in on this side. And then when we're done with that, <clears throat> we have to actually sand this down because this is where the tire bead sits. And if you don't actually remove that weld, your tire will leak, it won't hold air. So you have to sand it back down. That's why you got to cut this out to get down to, um, so that you can fill the weld because if you try and weld a bead over top of it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna seal. Not to mention, that's how you, f you fix a cast aluminum, is you have to basically bead channel it out and fill it with weld. You can't just slap a bead right across this crack and expect it to, to hold. I like to take a cutoff saw, four and a half inch cutoff saw, and just make a slit right down to your crack. It's really hard to get into these contours with anything else. And then I'll go back and I'll and I'll try and V this out so that I can make sure that my weld gets penetrated deep down in it. So you can use whatever you got. The edge of this, because it's so thin, works pretty well with kind of putting a tapered on there so that you can actually get your penetrate your weld down, get your filler material in there. The hardest part is right where the this lip is, because it's you really can't get anything in there. So you might take a, a die grinder or a Dremel if you have one and try doing doing that section right there. There's also an issue doing it right here as well nothing's really going to get in there. You can't really get in there. As you can see, this doesn't, it hits this edge here. So a die grinder works pretty good. All right, we're going to try using this uh, <laughs> tapered uh, bit here, carbide burr cutter. Aluminum tends to get jammed up in it pretty good, so I don't know how well this is going to work. But this would be an ideal tool to kind of get down into that groove and kind of channel it out.
we slid it and then we used the die grinder with the V-bit. We channeled it out as best we could. So we could definitely get our, our filler rod down in there. So what I'll do is I'll weld the inside first. And the reason for that is you want this weld to sink in as deep as possible because this is the side that you're going to have to sand so that your tire will be will seat here in this groove. If you weld this side first, your weld will be nice and flat here, flush, and then on this side you'll beat up and then you'll have a lot more to sand. Aesthetically, this is the side you'll see. It's the inside of the rim, so it really doesn't matter. But this is more important. You don't want your, your tire leaking air. So we'll get to welding this right now. The other issue you have is on a nice finished wheel is how do you ground it? Now I don't want to lay this on the table because I don't want to mar this finish up. That's why I have it on cardboard, but we definitely need to ground this. So I found that you can either go through the, um, I have a, an adapter here for the uh, valve, the air valve. Um, this happens to have the uh, tire pressure sensor in it, all new cars do. So I'm not going to go ahead and mess with that. But the other thing I do that works really well is I just put a bolt right through. A bolt set up like this, just right through one of your lug holes. And I'll ensure that you got a good ground. You can ground directly to that on the back side. That way you don't mar the finish up. Get her good and snug because you don't want to light up on it without a ground on AC. That, that can kill you. <clears throat> I like to prep my uh, filler rod. I'm just using 4043 filler rod here. Wipe it, wipe it down with acetone. As you can see here. It does uh, pull some stuff off of it. I like these... Um, Pro level blue shop towels. They're available, I think, at Wally World. They tend to not fall apart and fray like the standard blue towel. Your regular shop towel. These with acetone, they just start delaminating and you got paper particles all over your work. You can see you get quite a bit of stuff off there. It doesn't hurt to wipe your weld down even though you're just grinding on it. I shouldn't say weld, the wheel, you see. <laughs> you can always take a dedicated brush for aluminum and go over it. She's ready to weld. So I'm going to go ahead and try and weld this. Uh, I got my welder set at 170 amps um, and at 65% cleaning <clears throat> and at 120 hertz. Now because it is cast, it's going to take a little bit for it to heat up and puddle so you got to get the heat into the rim. Um, you can also weld it at a lower frequency. Um, that really helps can cast sometimes because it helps flow out and penetrate better where the higher frequency doesn't but uh, the last wheel I did I normally would weld this at 50 or 60 Hertz the last wheel I did I did do a BBS wheel I welded at 120 and it seemed to, to work really well now this is a stock Dodge SRT wheel um, it's a, it's feels a lot thinner than the BBS wheel which I'm not surprised so I'm not sure but I'm gonna try at 120 Hertz and see what happens see how it flows out so I'm just using 4043 filler rod. 330 second. And we're welding the inside first. Not sure if you noticed what happened there, but the high frequency uh, arc start actually took out my microphone and what had happened here is I inadvertently forgot to hook my ground up to the wheel and you guys that do welding off a table and ground to the table this this is something that can sneak up and really bite you in the butt and it has done it to me in the past one time on DC 
and uh, it felt like somebody punched me in the chest. But on AC, this, this is extremely dangerous and it can kill you. So it's imperative that you make sure that your piece is grounded. Now this piece is on cardboard, so it wasn't grounded. I was pretty much fully insulated. So the current didn't travel through me, but it could have been bad news bears if I was, uh, if it would have been summertime and I had been sweaty, uh, it, it could have ran through me. Unfortunately, my microphone didn't pick back up until I actually power cycled the GoPro. So I'm just basically telling you here what I'm seeing and um, what I'm doing when I'm trying to weld it through. So I'm just trying to get the weld down into that crack as deep as I can. I'm checking the back side every so often to see how deep I'm getting in there. So I got my filler wire in there. I'm getting the rim hot and I'm going to go ahead and use pulse. That's what I'm showing with my hand here. I'm going to use a manual pulse on the foot pedal to try and push the heat and push the aluminum down into it. So I'm using gravity as an advantage, so I want to pull down into, into that crack. And then I'm using the manual pulse with my foot so that I can control the flow of the puddle. So you got to watch your puddle, and depending what your puddle is doing here, and the heat that you're putting into it with your foot dictates how much you want to stay on the puddle, or pedal for the puddle, and how much you actually want to depress the pedal to put more heat into it. Now, like I said, I'm limited to 170 amps. Uh, that's what I currently have it set at. So what I did here is I turned the wheel down on the side so that I can get that lower lip. So I'm using gravity to allow when I heat that up using my foot uh, pedal by pulsing it, I'm heating that aluminum up so it'll actually drop down into that edge. Because when I had it up um, vertical, I was having to climb up. And of course, the, the aluminum will want to melt back down. And I want it to drop down into the edge of the rim here. So I flipped it down and I used pulse because I already had some aluminum in there from the filler rod. And I'm just smoothing it in there by using the, the foot control to pulse uh, the heat and control the puddle flow. I'm just going back over it a few times to try and smooth out the puddle um, because that's where the tire bead is going to seat. So if I can smooth it in there a little bit smoother, that's less sanding I'm going to have to do in the end. Here's the inside. We'll have to sand that lip down and try and go over it a little bit more with 50 hertz and see if it will draw it in, flatten this puddle out a little bit so I'll have a little less sanding. Okay, we're looking good there. That did the trick. That'll be a lot easier to sand out right through here. You just need to let this cool now. Once it's all cool, we'll sand it out. Sand this edge down here. You'll see the beads build up a little bit. I can easily get that with a palm sander. That'll sand nice. This I have to do by hand with sandpaper. It's a real pain. This takes, this could take me half an hour, 45 minutes to sand it to get it nice and smooth. And if you don't take your time on this, if you don't take your time prepping it and welding it right, sanding it's not going to help you. But once you do prep it and weld it right, sanding it is going to allow the tire uh, to seat the bead to seat inside this. If you don't, this will never seat and then uh, they'll just leak air. That's what I found. This is my fifth wheel I've fixed in the past three months. It cracked exactly like this. While we're waiting for that to cool, Here's a little merch plug. If you guys might be interested, I make and sell these little grinder holders for your four and a half inch grinders. So you can mount them there. It's on a mag base, hangs off the table. I have a few of them around. I've been using them for years. Really stable. Also sell these uh, porch holders. See this? allow you to throw your torch in like that on a standard torch. These torches here, these uh, flex locks don't 
and we'll fit in that through there. I always end up putting them in there like that anyways with the back cap. Same thing there. Um, real handy, that way it doesn't fall. You can also put a pair of pliers in there, you can put your air hose in there, your nozzle. Anything that'll fit in there that you're working with, it's pretty sweet. I sell them. They're, I think, 25 each, and the grinder holders are 25 each, um, or 45 for the pair. Just hit me up, uh, breathablemetalworks.com. Send me an email or whatnot. I don't have my e-commerce site up and running yet. This is something else I gotta do. Just never have time. But uh, PayPal, I'll be glad to ship you, you out some if you're interested. I use them all over the shop. I have a whole bunch of them. Whole pile here. <laughs> Just need to be powder coated. All right, we got this all sanded out here. It's uh, got a little bit of a little bump, but without going back in and filling more weld, sanding more, it might be perfectly fine. The only way I'd do that is if uh, you would uh, have it wouldn't seal if you get a little bit of leak. So I leave the weld over here on this side. I like to leave that to add some strength. This weld is solid the whole way through. The tire should uh, seat in there just perfectly fine. Now, when you got to get in there and sand, I do a lot of hand sanding. So I take a, a, something like this and get in there. Maybe use a, like a little rod to get in there. Use your finger. The other thing you can use if you got it, if you got a Dremel, small Dremel that might fit in that groove, something that fits in that groove nice. Because that's going to be your biggest problem. If you don't get that smooth in there, your, 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 your tires are not going to seat the bead and it's going to leak a little bit. Another thing was uh, we found this flappy disc here. It's kind of got the rounded edge. That I was actually able to remove a lot there. So if you get a, if you have a real big bead, bead up, uh, build up, you're not going to be able to really uh, hand sand that very easy. You're going to need some sort of power tool to help help eliminate it. But hopefully, guys, that helped you guys figure out. You know, if you could want to tack, tackle a job welding and repairing a. Uh, a cracked wheel. Uh, I do this pretty much on a regular basis. It seems like I get one a month. Um, I don't know how they find me, but hey, I don't mind. I got a system down, you know, that, that seems to work. You know, make sure you do it on some cardboard. Make sure you ground your lug through there instead of grabbing it to the chassis. If you grab it to the chassis and you still have a little bit of paint on it, it might arc through there and you're going to ruin their paint job. So all the ones I've done have been the inside lip. I haven't had any, any, none of them came out with a broken outside lip, and that might be because it's a, it's a lot thicker here. This is much thinner compared to the front sides. So it's quite possible that that's why that, these always seem to be the thing that crack. You hit a big pop hole, pop, pothole or a curb, and um, you know, these always seem to be the first thing to go. So hopefully guys, you, uh, that helped you out and decision whether or not you want to try and repair a wheel. All right, thanks. Alrighty guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, we'll see you next time. Alrighty, have a good one. So bring your A game, cause you know this party won't stop. We could never run out of time, sipping strawberry lime, you know I